Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting June 3rd, 2019 at 7 p.m. here in the Deerfield Town Hall. Of course, the meeting is open to the public and tonight's agenda is uh, to review minutes of the previous meeting, review mail, take any public comment. Our new business tonight is to review and discuss proposed bylaw changes, uh, proposed changes and additions. Old business is a site plan review, a public hearing of 141 Greenfield Road, which has been continued from May 13th, 2019. Then we'll take up any other business not reasonably anticipated 24 hours, 28 hours, 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting. We'll adjourn. Any questions, adjustments to the agenda? I would suggest we take old business before new business which is actually what we, I thought that's what we normally do. So, and also we said the public hearing would open it close to seven, so. Yeah, so it's yeah. about seven o'clock. Is that what you just said, seven? Well, I'm gonna switch on the agenda, I'm gonna switch. No, no, but you're, was it seven? I didn't know. It was exactly at seven when we opened there we it go. tonight. There we go. Um, all right, and I'd like to also, uh, Welcome all the members of the planning board. We have name tags, all of us, except for our, our newest Anne member. Mary. We apologize, Anne Mary. It's okay. But why don't we just uh, introduce ourselves, if we could? Anne Mary Cloutier. Rachel Blaine. John Waite. Kip Camosa. Paul Alice. Roger Sadowski. Max Antis. We've got seven out of seven tonight. That's great. Thanks, everybody. We have the minutes from the previous meeting, which was. Oh, I gave them to you, Paul. Here, yeah, yeah. What I was that date? You've got a copy. Uh, the 13th, yeah, May 13th. May 13th. Um, here you go, take your, just give them back to me there. Now. So I just said, um, Chris Chamberlain, we're gonna correct the spelling of his name. Uh, a couple of the typos, I guess. And then um, I just, under the third, I'd like to add a third bullet under site plan review that says, um, or actually, I guess the second bullet. You want to continue? We just that continue one. that sentence to make it clear that um, Rachel Blaine will contact SWCA Environmental, Josh Charette, and will get the continuation agreement signed by the appropriate person. And then, if we add, and they will work with our peer reviewer to address any issues regarding the VESH project. Does that make sense to add that just to be clear what sure. what the end of that discussion was about? Any other uh, comments on read, the, read that? Read that. Read that one sentence again. And they will and work. They will with work our with peer our peer reviewer, reviewer to address any issues. To address any issues. Okay. We have a motion to approve May thirteenth minutes. I move to approve the minutes of May thirteenth, two thousand nineteen. As amended. Second. Second. All those in favor? Who said second? Me. Rachel. Rachel. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? I'll abstain. Roger was absent, so he's abstaining. Thank you, Roger. And I'd like to thank Paul for getting the minutes out to us very early. We appreciate that. Had time to review them so that they were, were able to move through it a lot quicker at the meeting. So okay. Thanks, Paul. Yep. Public comment, does anybody have anything quick to say that's not on the agenda tonight? <coughs> yes. <laughs> I just came in to inquire as to the status of the decision of 198 Mill Village Road and whether we can expect it soon. This, this was in our minutes, so do we have any update on it? We have Mr. no Adams? other update except for that we forwarded to our council all that he required of us and we're waiting on him to send it back. I have. You know, the draft in front of me, I can't imagine it doesn't look anything super different than this, but I don't know why it's taking forever. I really don't understand have it. We, um, have we CC'd the applicants on our correspondence with council? Is that something maybe we I could know. We could do that. Do to help. I don't know if that would help, frankly. I, 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 I honestly don't think it would help either. 
council. I didn't we have we, at all, so I don't know if you and, and we forwarded the there. same draft uh, from us just to say this looks, you know, this looks like something that you could work with. So we just haven't had a lot. I of happen time. to, I believe we're going to see our council in the next week, or meet with him. personally on the twelfth, twelfth of June. He's going to be here in town on the twelfth, so that might help actually speed things yeah. up. So let's get. Send him, send, an send, him, send him an email I'll saying, please email. bring it to the 12th, yeah. meeting on the 12th. Yeah. Is that a public hearing on the 12th? Well, it's, no. it's going to be an executive session for the... About a different topic. Different topic, but it's, uh, but it's going to be with the selectmen and with the uh, planning board. Well, let me know if you hear any news, would you? Yep, we will. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Apologize. Yep. Thanks. All right, old business is the site plan review. It's a public hearing at one, for 141 Greenfield Road. Let me just officially read the... Uh, Notice of public hearing. The Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on June 3rd at 7 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, to act in compliance with the Town, town Zoning Bylaws, Section 5400, Site Plan Review application submitted by MIB Construction and Custom Cabinetry on behalf of Store Master Funding, LLC, for a proposed 2,560 square foot addition for the VESH building, which is the veterinary facility located at 141 Greenfield Road. Copies of the project uh, have been available in the municipal offices during normal working hours. Anybody interested should come to the hearing. So this is a continuation from April 6th and May 13th. And April 6th? And it was open on April 6th. It was continued on May 13th. And May to tonight, I was informed that we had uh, selected a, a peer review, uh, Berkshire Design, to do peer review. Mm -hmm. And did we get the signed form done after no. the last meeting? We had an email confirmation that was going to stand instead. Okay, all right. From Kerry. Um, and we've had. Um, so the peer reviewer and the. Um, the uh, folks from from Vesh have had some correspondence, but I was informed earlier today that there was not a resolution to the, or there hadn't been time for the responses. But I do see representative of C SWCA, or yeah, all right. Kevin, you want to come up and sure. talk about this a little bit? Um, so if you just. What was your name again? Sorry. It's Kevin McCaffrey. Kevin McCaffrey. M C C A F F E R Y. M C C A F F E R Y. E R Y. I'm sure I've got it written down somewhere else. Uh, so just from an administrative standpoint. And just to be clear, so you're you're uh, representing <coughs> VESH, which is Veterinary Emergency and Specialty Hospital. I I never. They don't always say that, so that's Correct. the name of the yes. place. Yes. So I'm I'm, I'm, I'm the civil engineer for the project. With SWCA, uh, we're working for Besh. Um, just from an administrative standpoint, I'll be the, the primary contact with an SWCA from this point forward. Uh, Josh has left the firm, oh. um, and uh, admittedly, there may be some history that I'm not completely up to speed on. Uh, so I'm just sort of jumping into the to the rest of it. I've been working on the engineering so far. Good. So we. So this is Josh's. Correct. But it's all stands as as is. It's just. You're taking over it. Yeah, so. any changes or revisions that would be needed, I'll, I'll need to take care of those uh, with my group. Um, so Greg from Berkshire Design <clears throat> sent us some initial comments late last week uh, by email, uh, which were basically just a list in an email and then um, some comments on some of the submittal materials said, you know, these, these are my questions. Um, once we get these worked out, I can, can issue a letter. Uh, so we looked at those, and then we talked, Greg and I talked this morning, and we both sort of agreed that although none of the points were, I don't consider them major to the point where they're going to change the, the site plan too much and, and what the approach will be, uh, but we both agreed that, that there just wasn't enough time to wrap that up today. 
and have him review it and then issue a letter saying he was okay with things. So that's, that's the status as of now. Um, and then he did issue a formal, and then I said, you know, I think really the way that we probably want to approach this from a procedural standpoint is you issue an actual letter today that outlines your questions. Uh, I present that to you. I believe he sent that directly to John this afternoon. Yeah, I got something just this afternoon. Uh, he copied me. And that was, uh, that was in line with his comments by email last week. It, you know, it was the same, same questions and, and items. So, you know, who I guess sent, that's where we're who at. Sent, who sent the letter? Uh, Greg Hansen from Greg Berkshire Hansen. Design. That's our peer reviewer. Peer reviewer, okay. Who actually, I thought it was, I thought it was Chris. And then, so did I. But somehow they were I think, together. Yeah, I think Chris is. Well, Chris was here that day. No, he know. sent the, we, we, he corresponded with the him. The initial okay. correspondence with okay. him, but they yep. worked together. So yeah, I think maybe yeah. he's administering the, actually, like the this contractual side, and then Greg's the actually doing the review. Yeah. yeah. So. So that's current status. I mean, I, so I think we like have, we're going to continue. I think we obviously need to continue because I, you know, mm -hmm. I, I can talk through some of these points, but I, you know, until yeah. you see a response from Greg, I don't think we're really going to get anywhere. And um, and to tell you the truth, when um, when this came to light this morning, I told Greg that it sounds like we're going to have to continue it, so don't bother coming tonight. Um, but I think he is prepared to come another time and after you guys talk yeah, about he it. Yeah, was, he was asking about that, and I said yeah. I'm not sure what the board's expecting, uh, yeah. but I don't think you really need to be there tonight. So, we, I mean, we appreciate you coming just to help well, clarify yeah. it and know that it is going to move forward. The, um, can most you sign? Can he sign the uh, uh, continuation? Yeah, if he's the only one here from yeah. representative. As a representative. So most of the comments that our peer reviewer had, that some of them just yep. – little word changes here and there. There was a number that didn't match up. And then there might be a couple other measurements that you'll do over the next week or so. Yeah, it was a couple of the plans, the figures he was looking for changes on that I, I just couldn't get done today. Right. So, um, so I guess the question was because I, I, think, I think the first month we got a little behind on this, and so we wanted to speed it up. And I know Vesh wants to start doing some stuff. There's a potential that, um, that, that we might need a second meeting for June 30th, so later this month. And if we could do that, then we could try to get you guys in finished before the end of the month, too. Sure, sure. Yeah, we definitely appreciate that. I don't need a whole month to do this. Yeah, you know, I mean, it I seems think, like a I week or two. probably about a week or so I'd, yeah. I'd be ready. So. Could, it, could it be on a different day than a Monday? Or? Yeah, I mean, we'd have to find out when we could get a quorum. But the other, right. the other one is this, um, the, th the thing about the uh, bylaws, because we. The grant runs out. We, we screwed up. Um, we were supposed to have a public hearing on the bylaws, but we didn't post it in time. Oh, okay. So um, that that that's why you have a second meeting. Yeah. So that's why um, tonight yeah. might be a quick meeting, but then if we could schedule one well, later I, in I'm, the month. My my week is scheduled out the rest of the month, so I may not be able to come. So I may have to take the minutes. That's all. All right. Depending on if it's on a Thursday. Um, well, or let's Friday. let's um let's just say we're gonna get. Do you have um? So so when's your next regular meeting? Next so, regular is July first. Is that I think right? that's, is that right? Yeah. On May the 1st? July yeah. 1st. Um, so maybe the week of the 17th of June? Or the 24th? Yeah, either, either of those. <laughs> we would need two weeks to post the other public hearing, and that would be two weeks from, two weeks and two days. So the earliest we could probably have it is the 19th. Uh -huh. um, well, that's good, because... I'll be back the 19th. What date's the 19th? What date? It's a Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday? We so, I mean, Thursday. I mean, normally we do try to Stay on Monday. keep it on Mondays. Um, so, would we get a quorum here on the 24th if we did it on Monday the 24th? I could double check, uh, mm -hmm. but it uh, means canceling another meeting. If I well, let's, let's see if Max the, is what? checking. Roger? I think so. I can be here. I could be here. I can be here the 24th. Can you be here the 24th? I believe I can. Mm -hmm. So June 24th. Does that work for no. you? I think you so, can't, yeah. we, no, you we think can't do it seven. the 24th. Seven. What's the 24th? There's a town election here. Election? Yeah. Election? For what? But we just had an election. To spend $19 million. That's that night? That's the 24th. Special meeting? <coughs> Cat's sure good thing you're here. It's, it's here all day from 10 to 8. 
$19 million. All right, we'll, we'll put that off and we'll listen. Please vote no. We'll hear about that after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, holy smoke. Oh, no, that's, not, that's just the beginning, so. All right. right. Um, June and, and it goes to it goes how about to June thirty first uh, until eight o'clock. Yeah. yeah. How about <laughs> how about June twentieth? That's a Thursday. Yeah, I can't. Be no, right Mickey. Okay. June the twenty fifth. That's a Tuesday. Tuesday is usually not select like board meetings. Yeah. No, it's Wednesday. Special Roger, are you good Actually, to this on is Tuesday? going to involve you too, right? So, yeah. Is that, do you know so if that any will, of that? I, I, do, do, is that would be that your your understanding is that we need two weeks to post a yeah. thing, and I think usually two it takes a day hours. or two to get it posted. So, yeah. I'd rather wait till that week of the twenty fourth, twenty fifth work for you, or yes, twenty fifth, Max. Works as badly as any other day. Yeah, yes, exactly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, let's oh, do the 20, Tuesday the 25th at um, <laughs> 7 o'clock, I guess. 7 o'clock. All right, so I'm going to write that down here, and then I'll get you to set, sign this, Kevin. Okay. 25th, June, at 7 p.m. And if prior to that, if, if you guys do have a back and forth and you can even send us something, we could, if something like a letter like this from um, Greg, yeah. we could look at that ahead of time so that could be a quick. Yeah, that'd be my preference is to have it all wrapped up yeah. before okay. the meeting happens. Okay. And then we could even <laughs> draft a decision. Oh, that would be an easier decision. Prior to, to it so that if we could have a vote and do a decision in the same way. This is night, not a new be, decision. Yeah. This is not about something that we've never no, decided this, this about was, be this would be ever more, before. Much more standard. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Did I just sign in for the face? I might have done that. Yeah, I signed it oh, above it. How about that? <laughs> it's in here somewhere. Yeah, I've got it written down. <laughs> I'm excited. Well, There's so many repetitions on this one. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. You want to sign that? Um, yeah, let's do an official vote. Um, can you make a? Uh, oh, fantastic! Thank you. Can you make a motion? Uh, make a motion that we um, continue this hearing for Vesh, um, 141 Greenfield Road, a public hearing. I'll second it. Thank you. <laughs> Two. All those in favor? To June. To June, June 25th, 25th at 7 o'clock, in public office. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. So seven zero zero. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get them. Do we get them? We don't get them. Yeah. Yeah. Seven zero zero. Thank you, everyone. Thank you Thanks. for coming. Thank you. This is um, really helpful. It's really helpful to be here, even if it's. That's so bad. I really appreciate yeah. it. I think that makes it. Um, What's these other? I just want to make sure this stays here. This is the blank button for next time. Okay, so maybe we get a decision draft. All right, so all these documents stay in here. Roger, do you want that? Or do you want that? You want that or I'll just look at it if okay. you don't want it. I'm putting that in here too. But I'll just review it. Is that the only copy? Or no, there's a bunch of them. Oh, so you oh. can take the this? Yeah. Do you want a copy? I no. got a copy. Okay. Right? He's got one. If anybody wants it, otherwise it's in the. Okay. That's fine. Okay. It's in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, next is um. Then we were going to have a discussion about proposed bylaw changes and additions. And um, Chris, remind me your last name. Curtis. Curtis. Chris Curtis was here back, not last meeting, the meeting before that, um, April. Um, and he presented some 
potential uh, bylaw changes uh, regarding floodplain zoning. And we, we said we liked them and we wanted to have a public hearing and to move them forward. We had hoped to have the public hearing tonight and that that meeting I thought we said we would have it, but then we didn't get it posted as a public hearing tonight. So we can't, we can't have a public hearing, but we can get an update from what you've done so that we can then post the public hearing and just decide tonight if we want to have it on June 25th, um, get the word out to the public, and then make more, you know, we can then move it faster once we have the public hearing. Mm -hmm. So that sounds okay. Can we sure. have Chris come up and tell us sure. a little more of what's going on? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, and at the same night, there was also, if you remember, there was a citizen's petition. And I do want to clarify what happened to that. Um, do you know anything about that? Are you here for? So, and what was your name? My name is Lily Dwight. Lily Dwight. My recollection was, but I know it didn't get it into the minutes, is, was that, um, that there was the citizen's petition, but in order to, it was, it was kind of be put on hold until we looked at these Correct. floodplain and other bylaw changes that might actually cover it. cover it, and then they don't need that other one. Yeah. Right. And we don't, right, if the issue is water, then let's manage that issue and that can cover the other things. So, so we've got a bunch of documents here. Did you supply these or did you send these to someone at the town? They printed? No, they're the ones here. I sent a uh, revised version of the floodplain zoning bylaw and a fact sheet on the floodplain yep. zoning bylaw. Do you have both of those? Yep. Oh, great. This one says updated 114.18, though. So that was oh, the one from. Oh, oh, it should say 530.19. That's the one. Yeah, I have that in front of me. You do. Here it is. OK, so now we'll get this one. OK. okay. Yeah. Oops. No worries. Thank you. You're welcome. Right there. Yes. And then I have a you want copy. You know, I think that that would be one of those things that maybe once there's a public hearing open, that would be the thing to do is to, since it's not a public hearing, so, but that, I don't know that we have a practice for that, but that is something that we should consider. It is a good idea. <laughs> and actually, what happens, Lily, in general is that they're in, the, they're, it's available in the town offices, so it's not necessarily posted, but it's available in the town offices, so potentially something posted is... But if you um, if you'd like a copy for right now, that would be good. Want a copy now? We have. But I think that in any in any case, when there's a public hearing, that's the the, the materials are available in the town offices. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No matter the. So I just gave away mine. Is that what you're looking at there? Yeah. 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 No, they're yours. So the. Floodplain zoning um, bylaw is exactly the same as the one that you approved at the previous meeting, with the exception of I just found one word that was missing in your existing bylaw, so I decided to fix that. <laughs> and it's you. just so you know where it is it's uh, section 4303, establishment of districts. There's a reference to the firm maps, we and the, the firm map stands for flood insurance rate map, and the word word rate was missing from your existing bylaw, so I just put that in there. So it's not a big deal, but I just wanted to, you know, make it accurate. Full, full disclosure. Got it. Um, so you've already looked at this mm -hmm. and approved it, um, and it's ready not, ready to go for advertising at this point. Um, okay, not, so not approved it to make it no, a bylaw, but to but get to, it to the public to, hearing. to go right. forward with go public forward. hearing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, We're not that powerful. The, the, or that. The fact, sheet, <laughs> the fact sheet you haven't seen before, it's um, 
just really intended for distribution at, at the public hearing and any other uh, meetings like town meeting where it might be appropriate to give uh, folks that are interested in this um, a sort of clear understanding of what the bylaw does, what its objectives are, um, what areas are affected by it, and it's framed in a way that's more, you know, common standard English rather than the zoning language. So um, you can use this however you see fit, but my intention was to have it for public distribution. You could put it out in the town hall here and, and so forth just so people can be uh, as educated as possible about the, the bylaw changes that are being proposed. Chris, I have a quick question. Is uh, These um, changes are the ones that are normal font the existing in the bold font, the changes? Exactly. Okay. Yep. Right. So for example, 4306 is, doesn't exist now? That's correct. Okay, thank you. If, if you look at our bylaws, it's, it's very short, short. short yep. and sweet. Yeah, okay. and so that's okay. a lot of what he's doing yep. is expanding. On. So that's, you know, the, the kind of quick update on where we are with floodplain zoning. I can also give you an update on the other piece that we talked about last time if, if, um, if you'd like, but I, I don't want to. Just out of curiosity, when you put in these definitions here, yeah. um, and, I, and I'm doing this for memory, so I'm probably off base on it, but isn't there a section in our zoning just for definitions? Or is there? I don't know. There is, I, but it's I've noticed sparse. that the definitions tend to be spread around the bylaw yeah. a little bit. Well, that, that's the only reason I asked that question, because I think it came up before. It, not, yeah. not on yours, but um, no, I think that's, in general. It wouldn't be a bad idea to put all your definitions in one section at some point. But or have them in bo all, both places. In both sections. I mean, there is a definition section. Well, that, that's right, what I thought. So I would just, you know, I remember we had some discussion about it back away, so when we, we came up with definitions and... and uh, Maybe something to do with the height of buildings, or I don't know. It was something back a ways when we were mm -hmm. doing something. It, you know, most town bylaws, after a while, they get to be kind of a you know, patchwork of things that are pulled together from yeah. various <laughs> different town <laughs> meetings. So, so much you better. have that problem. At, and at some point, it's useful to maybe take a look at it and, and just sort of reconfigure sure. okay. the whole bylaw. Yep. Chris, on this 4306, when you talk about development in a floodplain district and you make reference to the building code yep. and you says current section 744, is that section 44 of the uh, building code? Yes. Okay. Now, do you mean the, the Massachusetts state building code? Or the stretch, yeah. No, not the stretch, oh, no. but Massachusetts, that's kind of a thing. Massachusetts's building code is the... Uh, ICC code. Massachusetts doesn't specifically have a building code. They have addendums to the ICC code. So how does that reference this? Um, that's a good question. Um, there is a section in, in, there, in the state building code that, that we're referencing here that specifically deals with um, floodplains and building in the floodplain. And what it does is um, makes a requirement, for example, that the first habitable floor of a, of a residential building has to be raised to a level above the 100-year flood level. Okay. That's the, the most relevant um, component of, mm -hmm. of the building code that we really wanted to kind of make sure got referenced here. Um, there's also provisions for um, flood proofing of structures in the state building code in that same section. Um, so rather than reiterating all the, that detail here, it's just referenced. Um, so I can, what I can do is send you um, I'll look through, I'll look through the code. I, I, I just know that what's called the Massachusetts State Building Code is just addendums to the ICC code. So I didn't, I'll, I'll try looking in the ICC code, which I, I don't think that this would be in there. So it must be in some addendum, but I'm not sure which one. But Yeah, um, without having it in front of me, I, yeah. I can't answer that, but I, okay. I, can, I can certainly send it to you. All right.
Also, when, when this makes reference to floodplain districts, are there difference between a five-year floodplain district or a 10-year floodplain district? Your, your floodplain district is based on the federal flood insurance rate map, which yep. really only shows a 100-year floodplain is really what they refer to it as. Um, so that's the boundary of the of the. Well, of the, so the, the A and a B isn't there to that. Yeah, there are several different sort of subsets to that. Um, so it encompasses sure all the. the, the B, there's means, a there's an A and an A one through thirty, which is referenced in this section on the establishment of districts. Um, so it really is intended to encompass all of those subsets of the of the floodplain. But that's not, nothing about that is changing from your existing map or your existing bylaw. That's, again, that's part of the, the text that's already in your bylaw. It's not bold. Right. So what you're saying that the first floor, does, it wouldn't be the basement, it would be the... First habitable floor is the is what the state building code refers to. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm going to have to do some research on it because I understand if you're building like along the Connecticut River, it's there's a, a flood plain, if you will, even though it would have to be extremely high. I can see development there, but along. Well, our floodplain along like the Deerfield River, you know, sometimes that floods every other year. I don't think we'd allow, I don't think we have any provisions to allow any construction of dwellings or anything other than maybe a, a, an equipment storage barn, you know, for our farmer. So I, well, that, that, you know, uh, that building that's down there on Deerfield Street, um, that's the antique store, not my son's, but the other one further south of there, yep. that one got flooded. Um, you know, when there was a big flood there. Came, right. came, came across and actually right. went to Richardson's Candy Kitchen. I understand that. that. I don't but know, was that a 100-year flood there? Was that a, what was I, that? I don't know, that was with Irene. That was Irene, Irene. yeah. Hmm. This, yeah, this is intended to kind of tighten up that that language in your in your existing bylaw, which doesn't clearly do what I think you think it probably does. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at it right now, the existing one. Um, you know, really it, it prohibits development in the floodway, which is that area. The floodway is defined on the flood maps as well. The floodway is the is the area where in a, in a major flood it's the it's the really the stream channel essentially where the water is moving rapidly. Um, and your existing bylaw prohibits development in that flood way, but not really very clearly in the flood plain. So this is intended to clarify the rules and regulations in, in the flood plain, the, the entire district. Um, that was the, you know, the thing that we really looked at and, and saw that your existing bylaw was pretty out of date and kind of vague and not really clear. When, um this one which says that uh, our existing zoning does not address the increased flooding frequency of the severity expected with climate change and does not meet the standards of the National Flood Insurance Program. Is it something that, I mean, the town doesn't have the ability to determine where this flood plain is, so well, can we adopt the maps from the National Flood Insurance Program? That yeah, pretty much that's, what you that's did? the intention. And okay. we, we were hoping, actually, when we when we did this initially, we were hoping that the new maps would be ready at, in time to be adopted at the same time that this bylaw came came through. Unfortunately, the uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency, which which is funding that remapping of the floodplain in Deerfield and most of the watershed, uh, is moving very slowly in that process. So I think mm -hmm. they might be as long as two or three years out before they're ready. 
with the new maps, but the intention would be once those maps come through and are revised, it'll show a modified floodplain district that does somewhat address the issue of you know increased severity and frequency of flooding. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the town, it would make sense for the town to adopt those new floodplain maps when, when they're approved by the federal government. And is the last one 1980? Is that what, that's um, the current one? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so it's pretty old. <laughs> yeah. So there's no way to put in the bylaws to adopt the current one that automatically in any way? Well, I think that's, isn't that what did? Well, you're saying we'd have to approve them after they come out. Well, so that's why I'm, I'm wondering if there's no way to, to put it in or, you know, to say. You can't really do that under zoning because um, any zoning map change has to be approved by town meeting. Okay. So you, you would just have to do it as a separate amendment. But if it only happens every four years, it's not a right. big deal, I guess. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So um, I guess one of my questions is this, how, so we do a public hearing, we put a thing in the paper. Um, that notice has to go in town hall as well. It goes in the town hall. There's no um, direct mailing to anybody because it's not a... That's correct. It's, it's right. not a 300 foot from something. So, so I guess part of, part of my question is who might be interested in this that might want to read it besides us? And is there a way for us to get it to the right people? Like who, who will be concerned about this? Property owners, I would say, that are in that district. Because right. Because it will affect the value of their property or the saleability of it. Use. Well, at this point, you're saying they're still working on the 80, 80 map, so... Um, it doesn't change the doesn't boundaries change of the district. For them. Right. Mm. But still, it but it restricts maybe some things they some can do. On that. I think it's some more uses. clear about what the restrictions are yeah. um, than perhaps your existing bylaw. Is I think it's what you intend in your existing bylaw, but it really sets but, it down more clearly. Yeah. Isn't there a lot of farmland though that's under the, that's in that area that? It's mostly so it's, farmland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this doesn't. I guess that's part of the question: is is this is this going to make some farmers well, unhappy? And should we make sure that they get the review at first, or is it not? Are they going to be prevented from pushing the sand and gravel off of their fields so they can plant corn again? Yeah, right. No. So uh, the permitted but uses. But it says what it says is riverine material, stones, rock, gravel, and other material comprise. So if the river drops it in their field, they right. can remove it. Not, that's not what I'm reading. Well, I guess the, the key section for, f for the farmers is uh, section 4307, permitted uses. It, it uh, makes clear that agricultural uses are, are permitted use. Um, and so is that worth adding that when it's... But if the river deposits three feet of silt in his field, can move it. Is that in his new field or can he take it out? It's not clear. Right, because in prohibited used to say no removal of river river, vine, right. river vine <coughs> materials. So is that Yeah, I can see I can see your point. Um, I mean they spent months with bulldozers right. pushing up piles. After Irene, yeah. I think right. there it's, it, it is it might it might be a useful clarification actually to, mm -hmm. to do that. I think the the intent here was to make clear that you shouldn't be bulldozing the banks of the river. Right, and but moving, that's different than you know, the right. banks around. But, but what, what your question is really more about what the, the, all that silt and, and material that gets deposited mm -hmm. in, a, in a major flood like mm -hmm. Hurricane Irene. Um, you're talking responsive, that, that you're talking the proactive, proactive moving yeah. of things. And, it, and it's not the intent to restrict farmers from doing that, so maybe that is a clarification that we should try to make here. Mm -hmm. um, I can do that. I can put a statement in that to that effect. And so you'd probably put it in 4307. Maybe expand on A. Yeah. Um, you know, any natural of fields. You make it so that things that naturally occur, they can. Right. Un well, you can put it back to the way it, it was. Not very clearly. It's the riverbank that they don't want. Yeah. dredging or any of that stuff. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't mention fields, but it is a little deceiving. It, yeah, it could be misunderstood, yes. so I'd like to clarify that. Um, 
So if I do that and get you back um, some language to that effect, or do you want to approve the language tonight? No. Um, what my understanding is that if it's we can have changes between now and when the public hearing, as long as they're not huge changes. So if it's a clarification, you just you bring it. You can even have a change after the. Well, that's the well, idea. Well, right. You can also thing. change it that night and beyond. As long so. as it, essentially, as long as it does not make your bylaw more restrictive, you can make changes yeah. even on the floor of town meeting floor, right, to right, do right. that. And then if it was but made this, it. So this would not be making the bylaw more restrictive. No. It would. No. So if you could just maybe add that and maybe. Put it in a different color if you can or something just so we can at least see what the change will, you know. So just so I'm clear, we want to say that farmers, it's a permitted use for farmers to to move or to remove silt um, well, deposited on farmlands. You want to say root rind material. Just, where it says no altering, and if you just put right after of the river bank, Dumping, filling, would that clarify it enough so it's really defined the river bank or the river bed or whatever and just leave it alone almost? But it'll definitely just say the river bank, not but, fields. But I mean, but even the, they, the river bank gets this stuff tossed up on it, they have to push it back off of it too. So, right. So it's, it's almost what you want to do is say if something happened naturally, you can Undo put it back it. to the way it was or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maintenance I mean, yields in agriculture. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, put it. Isn't that what it, it is? Put it back to the pre-storm condition. It's maintenance. And, and I mean, the way I think look at some of these things too is uh, there's a, a, a big gouge in the earth near the old Deerfield water treatment plant that was caused by Irene, and in a sense, during normal times like now, you go out. There's kind of like an island out there. To me, it makes perfectly sense perfect sense when the water goes down they should go in there and take all that material that's creating this small island and push it toward the banking where the uh, sewer treatment plant is to help protect that sewer plant mm -hmm. instead of further erosion you know hmm. I mean is it is it do you permit that kind of riverine material movement do you is that a smarter thing to do so well, then like the Kipps version of you movement. could do that by special permit. Well, they sort of did that on Mill Village, where I don't know if it's Childs or Wells. They yeah. armored that thing right. with riprap right. Right. because it was eroding. And what you're saying was well, pretty much. But further down the river, near you get that plant. When during that storm, it carved this big indentation, right. but it left like a big chunk of material in the middle. And it almost seems like when the water is low oh, in the summertime, in the go the in river. there pull that back Treated and, like an and, ox ball. Right, right. It, it took away maybe a quarter of an acre they should pull that back and you know, but, but that stuff will probably wash away you maybe pull it, it back but you got to armor that yeah, corner right. or whatever right. to, so it doesn't happen again, again sure mm -hmm. Ir mm -hmm. how about irrigation Cause every year there's dozens of people pulling water out of the river right they got to dig a hole to do it I don't they have to dig a hole to do it. To put their pump in. Sometimes they do, not always max, but they have to get down on the bank so they can get their piping sometimes. So Yeah. But the road that the tractor goes down to the river on. That's is. right. Sometimes they have a long suction, you know. Really? Isn't, well I'm I'm just saying you're right, Max. I agree with you to a certain he, degree. He wants to make more rules and we're not, we're not making more rules as much as clarifying, and it's us. It's up to all of us to decide what do we right. want to clarify. Just so. bringing up all the instances where. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so I think. But you're right. Strict. Some, sometimes something they have people to do have that. been doing for generations. Right. Now the intent is not to um, prevent agricultural uses from continuing. That's why they're the first listed permitted use here. But I again. You know I think. We're trying to clarify this as much as possible, and, and you're bringing up some important points. Um, maybe we should mention irrigation in 4307A as well, um, so that that's clear that that's part of agriculture and part of what's permitted. Because, I mean, you could permitted use, A, agricultural uses such as farming. You know, a farmer could say that lots of things. It's called farming. Right. Then you'd have arguments about it. So there's always going to be some 
you're never going to be able to make it perfect, but right. the Language intent system. is really what we want to be clear about. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. And then, like the last, second to last one under prohibited is no discharge of pollutants directly in any river. I mean, that's if there is a farmer doing that, they shouldn't be in. So it's a little more clear now. Right. Uh, well, it depends how close to the river the cows get, I guess. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> uh -huh. So there's there's a few clarifications that I've heard tonight that I will make in this language, um, and then I'll get you back something um, tomorrow, so that there's enough time to get the. It'd be great put to out. put it out there. Yeah. You're not going to put this entire bylaw in the newspaper anyway, but no. it would be important to have it. But available. we want to tell them to come here and see it, and so then right. it's here. Now, just so I'm clear, how is the, I'm not entirely clear how you, the protocol works with your assistant and posting things for public hearings? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. We um, don't have an assistant. <laughs> oh. So we're borrowing the assistant from the Building Priscilla. Commissioner. So Priscilla will, uh, so will she's been she'll get it in there. We have to be very clear on what should go in there. So if you could draft a sentence or two and include that, that refers to this, gets people at least thinking that this is what it might be, but then yeah. say they come down here and look at it. And we'll try to get it up on the website. Um, I mean, that would be the best thing. That would be the best. Will um, Priscilla need help with the drafting of the public hearing notice? Or yeah. She no, if you could help with that. She, I'm sorry? If you could help with that, that okay. would be great. Okay. She can make sure it gets to the recorder and that kind of thing, and what dates and goes in, but um, well, maybe. Oh, well, if, if we're clear. Are these you, maps posted here someplace? Or? No, I don't, he was saying we don't necessarily have them yet. No, I know the, the old ones, ones, but the, the old ones. ones. The old ones. So yeah, the, the, one the old one is somewhere online. here in town. Hall. <laughs> I've seen it. It's we not on the because because Lily's got it up on the. Is it? Right now. Is this so on Deerfield's website this or? Is the Deerf no. Yeah, okay. I, I was going to be like so hopeful. I was like. <laughs> yeah, really. No, no, but if this would be helpful, I can email the link to somebody. That would be great. To identify who needs to be notified. That's why I started looking well, at well, that, but, but see, we're not going to do any. Mailing? We're not going to do any mailing. Um, I mean, I don't know what the. No. Point. Right. Because it's but a, if it's you had a an general article or something, John. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Yes. If we could get an article in the paper, yeah, yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah, that would be the way to do it. Yeah. Social media. I guess. Do you, want, do you still want this link? Or yeah, yeah, if you could send that to, maybe send it. You get our emails and then okay. and to um, you, um, Diana if you have it. I, I can I can put together a, a press release. Yeah. But I think who be who would send it out? So we could um, Diana <coughs> would be the one to send it out. Is, is, uh, is Dominic still our guy? Or? I think so, but totally, uh, yeah. they've changed. He's, he's on a multiple month. Uh, he had a child. They had a child. Oh, Dominic good for him. Foley. So he's. I don't know when he's be back on duty or not. Oh, uh, we can. We'll find someone at the yeah, recording. Dominic Foley was the guy. There are not that many people working there. I know. Right. Unfortunately. I'm sorry, I'm not following what you're referring. Well, to. If we get it to Diana, we'll figure out how to get yeah. it in the recorder. Oh, okay. we used to have our we own. Have our we, guy, we, we have, have our guy. We don't have our guy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Walks our beat. Okay. Jumped around a little bit. All right. So I, I'll I'll do both of those things. And, and this is actually the kind of thing that um, the ag committee in town yeah. should be aware of. Yeah. And last I heard, John was our Baronis was, Baronis our, was our liaison to that, or he's on it, right? He might still be on it. I think he might still be on it. So why don't we um, ask Diana, or some of us can try to get it out if we know. You know anybody else on the ag committee? I mean, I think Does it's the planning a, board always have a person on him? No, no, I'm not sure. I think he got on just because he was interested. Well, I think John was on it, and he just. Yeah, so I think it's an independent same. committee, but we should, so that's, Diana should have a list of. Skip Sobieski, Jay Savage, yeah, Tom Clark, and Steve Taylor, Stephen Taylor. Yeah, so that'd be good. Um, that's I mean, obviously, the, the, yep. some farmers that are down by the water. You said Yap? Uh, Yap's yeah. on it. Yeah, he would probably be because. He'd be good. Right, he'd be right. He'd yeah, be some of him. these, well, he owns land. Jay, uh, Jay is on it too, Savage. Yeah, well, Carthill's up on the hill. They don't worry about it, probably. No, but Jay does. <laughs> he's got a lot of land in the first part. Yeah, he does. All right, so let's make sure we get to that. Were those part of the Sun Mass thing? No. 
Mm-hmm. So can we um, propose we vote to um, have a public hearing on June 25th at 7 o'clock to, on the proposed amendment to the Deerfield Floodplain District Zoning Bylaw? It sounds like a motion. I'll second. <laughs> Any discussion? Who, who's winning? Who made the motion? I John. Did. John. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. And that's going to be on the 25th at 7 o'clock? Yep. So when they do come out with these new maps, do you see the area increasing or decreasing? I would imagine it will increase. Yeah, I would think so too. I think the general expectation is that flood um, severity, extent, frequency are all increasing. and. Um, they can, they can do computer modeling to evaluate how that will likely affect the, the Deerfield and the Connecticut. They're, they're looking at both of the rivers at this point. Um, so I, I don't think it's going to be a dramatic increase, but I think it'll be, it'll, it'll be bigger. And I, I read through this very, very quickly, but existing structures that are there, if they increase it by 25%, then they have to come up and meet all these new standards? Right. Yeah, and that's that's referenced in here too, based on the kind of the existing footprint of the building. Is this, so it's mostly the Deerfield, Connecticut. Other rivers in Deerfield that would be affected, <coughs> like by the mapping, or by the by this by this. Like, what are the main I, areas? I think um, Bloody Brook is Bloody that Brook has some floodplain. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I think even the the mill. Has some modest. I was going to say plan. all of them probably to a certain oh, degree. Yeah. 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 So, so this I was having a discussion about something else the other day. But does any of this involve our, our? I think it's the state laws about the dam, the beaver dams and things. That's not. That doesn't get into this, does it? Or all right. And is there anything you can do in this to <laughs> help that? Well, I know there's some pretty unhappy people in our town. <laughs> Don't get rid of the beavers. Or, or take apart the beaver dams. I, I don't know which is the thing, but I um, think oh. so. All right. Yeah. Oh, well. I tried. Yeah. So let's see. Can I go back to that vote? It was 700. Yes. Yep. yep. So, um, so then we have, are you here to talk about the green development? Well, I thought I'd give you a quick update. Yeah. Um, we talked last time about a set of green development performance standards that um, we've been working on. The discussion went um, that we would, rather than having a completely new section of your bylaw, the planning board's preference was to, to merge those with your existing site plan review. Um, so I am working on that, and I'm pretty far along, um, but I'm not ready to hand out anything to you tonight. I, um, I think it will work. I think you know, it makes sense to blend the two together, and it'll you know, just add some additional standards to your site plan review. And I'll try to keep it as simple as possible and, and uh, minimize the amount of additional text and so forth. What I was going to ask you all is if um, we could possibly have a small working subcommittee that might meet once during the month of June to just um, review that. Uh, and the reason I ask for that is that, uh, as Kip knows, our, our grant um, that for municipal vulnerability planning runs out June 30th. So I'd like to try to get those you know, as advanced as possible before the grant runs out. And then hopefully we'll be able to find some other way to keep the work going. But um, most of that work is going to be done in June. Um, we talked about this a little bit the last time. I don't know if you remember, but we talked yeah. about having yeah. a, a sort of a, a working subcommittee that might even include a couple of folks that weren't planning board members. Um, well, also who from the uh, Deerfield for Sustainable Development because they also had some right. they had things they wanted to. And, and I, I should mention also that I met with uh, the DRD uh, group uh, in the last month or so, and they had had some really good um, discussion about the details of the of the proposed bylaw, and they made some suggestions just for clarifications and improvements to it. 
Um, so I have gotten some feedback and some input from, from them. And all of that, including your comments from the last meeting, are things that I will plug into a new draft, which will look very much like your existing site plan, plan review with some additional content to it. So how, how do you see it fitting in with the site plan review? Um, I'm going to blend those uh, green development performance standards right into your existing requirements so that you we don't make have any also. duplications, you know. Right. But would, would people kind of have the option of doing like a standard versus a better design or something? Um, well, if you, I don't know if you have a copy of the, yeah. the proposal, but there were some things that were optional. There were some things that were required. The optional. Um, this is the only one I have. I pulled it out from that meeting back in January or something. So, for example, there was um, a set of incentivized green performance standards. If, if a business use or um, industrial use um, did something like used a green roof or had permeable pavement or protected um, some open space or wildlife habitat, they would get some incentives for doing so. And the incentives might include um, additional floor area, a redu reduction in parking space requirements, mm. increase in building height, um, reduction in frontage requirements. And so there were some things in there that provided incentives for businesses to, to be more green than they might mm. otherwise be, but those aren't required. <laughs> That sound familiar? So they kind of tr like trade-offs. I mean, it, it, it comes under. We have that flexible development uh, bylaw. I think that's. I think that's what that was also aimed at. So I don't know if that also can fit in here. Uh, I guess that was also for um, an increase of five or more lots. So that's kind of a subdivision. They could use this, sub, this uh, flexible development. But I think that was part of it, is to try to trade off a little bit, do things a little tighter. <coughs> right. And, and we would give and take here if you kept more open space out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the flexible development is primarily for residential development, yeah. whereas these standards are primarily for commercial, industrial, and multifamily, just like your site plan review, it's it's going to apply to the same sets of uses that your site plan review applies applies to. Chris, do you work with state agencies much at all as far as development stuff like that goes? I've sure. I don't really know, but I've been hearing a lot of talk and on the news. The state of Massachusetts is really pushing to do away with a lot of local zoning about how big house lots can be and stuff like that. The state is really pushing for more houses, more affordable housing. Um, and, you know, I've been trying to, I don't know, I shouldn't say it like that. I've been concerned as to how that can affect our community. Um, so when I hear things like, you know, like more open space and more this and that, you know, it, it's a good idea well, this is the way I'm thinking about it. This is what the state is really trying to stop. Not that they, they, not that they don't want open space, but the, every time that you, I'm just going to say, if Mr. Smith has 10 acres of land and he wants to have 10 building lots, but because of open space requirements, he can only have six, that those lots become more expensive. And the state's pushing, saying, well, Mr. Smith, you should have 20 building lots. And instead of selling for 100000 you can sell for 60000 and put a smaller house on Everything becomes more affordable, and that's what we're going to do. Towns, I'm not just saying Deerfield, 
don't necessarily like that. So that's why there's been this big push with the state. You know, like, we're not going to let the towns do that. We're going to say this is a state law and stuff like that. So how do you see when communities put in, I'm going to just use the word restrictive type developments, how that plays into the hand of the state trying to curb that? Well, what you're talking about is um, the state has been concerned about what's sometimes referred to as exclusionary zoning. So communities, particularly some of the wealthy suburbs of Boston, have established zoning bylaws that create very large lot sizes, for example. Like you might have a minimum lot size of, of five acres in a community that's already pretty well developed. And essentially what it's doing is saying that unless you're a very wealthy person that wants to build a large mansion, you, you're not going to be allowed to build in that community. State's saying that, in the, and this is in the existing zoning act, you can't, you can't do that. You can't have exclusionary zoning. And the state's trying to provide incentives for towns to do what's called inclusionary zoning, which is to allow for a mix of different housing types that will provide housing for people of all different income levels. So providing um, opportunities for um, things like accessory apartments or for duplexes or for things where, you know, um, lower and middle income families have the opportunity to buy a home in, in the community is what the state's trying to incentivize and, and provide um, funding for and, and incentives for. So as far as how this ap applies to the green development performance standards, I, I don't think it does at all because we're not regulating residential uses here. Um, we're, regu we're regulating um, business, commercial, industrial, uh, municipal uses. We're trying to, you know, um, address the, the green issues there. There would be a potential companion piece to this that um, I would suggest to you, and, and it wouldn't come in into your site plan review, it, it would be adopted as part of your subdivision regulations that would have some of these standards in your subdivision regulations as well. Um, and we can, you know, take that up as kind of a separate issue. Um, if you again, I don't think it's going to be viewed in an exclusionary sort of way because it doesn't change the lot size, um, and, and hopefully it would not raise the price of housing in the, in the community. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I'm, yeah, and especially, you know, you talk about commercial industrial, but it, it kind of really makes me think, too, as to, you know, I've been around here a long time, Rajas, too, so, and there's not that many places to do any development, regardless of what you want to do. I, I don't even know of a commercial piece of land that's... Commercial is, you're right, Kip. You know, where, I mean, I don't even know if... if, if if somebody wanted to put a Toyota garage in town, I don't think there's a place to do it. You know, not unless they built, they bought an existing building and tore it down. You know, mm -hmm. just there's there's just virtually no land for sale, and our zoning is so compacted. You know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, some people could see it as a bad point, but some could see it's a very. Oh, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm yeah. just saying, you know, if we're talking about changing. A lot of bylaws. No, no, I know. I know what you're saying. Like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not saying we're not not to do it, but it's just like, well, right. geez, what, what, you know, what are we going to save here? Because there's no no place to really do it, anyways. Mm -hmm. you know? But hmm. but were people to do exactly what you're saying, take the property, Jenny be totally rejig that, then you'd really want something in place where you were you were kind of that, you were had some opportunity to not restrict it but to uh, right. you know, incentivize said, Channing Beach property is probably one of the only ones because all the That's other I've all the way down route 5 right. and 10 yeah. all the people that own that own you know fairly small parcels mm -hmm. of land mm -hmm. but is that commercial or industrial Kip? That's industrial right so Beat is oh so it's not even yeah. I thought it was yeah. industrial so industrial. then it cuts out a lot of commercial and yeah. also yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Oh, I thought all along there it was a commercial front. So I'm wondering how you might feel about the idea of some kind of a, a working session in, yes. in June. Would that be possible? Whether it's the full board or 
subgroup. Well, I think, um, well actually, way, then we get into the issue of a subgroup of this board needs to be public. You have to post it as a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Or if it was, could it be two of us? Posted on, on the town website as a public meeting. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is fine, you know. That, that's what we did for the housing. When right, it doesn't need a, it doesn't need a two week notice, it no. needs a two day notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 48 hour notice. Yeah, all right. And that's what we did when oh, Paul right. and I were on the housing, right. mm -hmm. the affordable housing thing. Affordable housing. It wasn't a meeting of our board. It was just two of us on that. Right, but and then there's you something get there's something that views we of two people that are on this board. So, that but that's the working. It's just the, I, I, it's I just understand. The, yeah, but but, but you could have more than but degree. you could have more than two people. I don't think it was restricted right. but, to two. But I think what John is saying, if you have more, it's like a. No, no. It, it's, we just have to post it as a public meeting, well, not not yes. a public hearing. I'm just yes, a public meeting. So yes. we, no, I'm yeah. saying it's a public meeting. Yeah, two um, two days ahead of time, and that's right. fine. Yeah. So if we could get a yeah a bunch of planning board members, and then um, you know, is anybody at the zoning board to be helpful to yeah. get, get someone yeah. there? I think, I think um, having someone from the DRD, if you're amenable, would oh, be absolutely. Thinking of having the meetings. I'm sorry. When are you thinking of having the meeting? Whenever you could possibly do it in the month of June, if that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> we already we heard a bunch of dates totally that aren't yeah, possible. Right. So. I know. I was just thinking, you know, during the daytime, if yeah. you do them, that would, you know, that would be I'd preferable be available for that. But I don't know if anybody else would. You would want to do it? I said I couldn't do oh, it. Yeah, I can't do it. Um, or, or. Actually, maybe like a four o'clock, four to six session or something. You sure. could get maybe then some what, of us could. What, whatever works. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm flexible to your schedules. And if we put that out there, Lily, you think there's, you would get some interest from some other folks? I mean, go. We make it a whoever wants to come or or try to. Uh, I think I would add in mind that you would you would designate. A, a certain group five or six yeah so seven, you don't, you don't want to get it more than that it's to have a working <coughs> session i think you need a relatively small yeah. group of people that yeah. you know we can really kind of roll up our sleeves and get into the language of the bylaw and, mm. and dig into it a bit it would seem to me that another byproduct of a meeting like that would be to actually like roger's pointing out look at these pro you know or kip saying look at the properties that are i mean look at the the map and look at what properties are affected and you know but is it more specifically too not just generally like if we were to have a 10 acre parcel da, 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 but actually saying in this property and in that property looking specifically at lots to me that makes sense because then you're actually kind of killing two birds with one stone you're actually starting to look at starting to look at the zoning for the town you know how do we feel about it? Mm -hmm. what kinds of recommendations because we've just talked about that recently with the solar you know that for one where where do we see things happening and what kinds of things are happening there? And what do you sort of want to have happen or, yeah. or not want to have happen? Yeah. yeah. And then the how. That's that's what you're talking about. Yeah. But you still, so I think that is a good idea, but you still have where people could buy a couple lots and change it. Sure, sure, sure. So you, you can't just look at the undeveloped right. lots. Right? Um, but I'm just, but, yeah. 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 So. Well, anyway. But the practicality of that is you, you're absolutely right. You, you know, you can... You know, it's less likely than yeah, yeah. extremely less likely. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so who wants to um, and set a date and then then try to get a couple people who could join that date? I think that'd be the best thing. Yeah, I think Diana would like to sit in on that. I know. Um, All right. I saw. Yeah, I would be of willing to do that. Yeah. And Paul, if it as long as it doesn't go past six, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think a yeah. late afternoon you could get someone who... That this, during this time of year, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights are all band nights in there, you know, so let's... Don't mess with band nights. Don't mess with the band nights, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I can go in and do it in the early afternoon. Who else? Four to six meetings. Yeah, yeah I think more members there. I agree. Mm -hmm. I'm not here. I'll barely make the 25th. You're what? I'm out of town. You want to propose a couple dates and see what these three or four people yeah. say about it? Um, why don't you start? <laughs> I'm, I'm, again, I'm flexible in terms of what days. I can bring my phone so I don't know. But okay, Henry. 
Okay, Mary, yeah, it's up Mary. to you then. Um, <clears throat> let's try for Thursday the 20th. Works for me. No, we're not saying that we want to have that and then discuss it at the 25th. We're not. Um, no, not. No, okay. No, huh. we wouldn't be ready for this that. This is the green practices thing? Green development performance green standards. Yep. And that started at 4 o'clock. Okay. So oh, the, that's the okay 20th at 4 o'clock? Yep, Thursday at 4 is okay. Okay. A couple of others could probably make that? Could you reach out, Lily? Do you want to take that responsibility to sure. DR? Sure. Two, yeah. Two. Yeah. Two yeah. Yeah. And so it should be people who, like who know or care some. And know. ideally, they know something about bylaws because right. it does get a little wonky. But yeah. So there's, right here, Kurt, a group Chris. Matt, on yes. this already. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who's on the zoning board these days. Who's well, the might the zoning board meets on the 20th? Oh, but they're, they're later. But later, so yeah. maybe you get somewhere on there. Meet in this, uh, in this somewhere well, here know in the building, Chris. Well, you know who should be. I'm sorry? Meet somewhere here in the building. Uh, maybe in this room. Room or? 130, okay. Whatever we can get. I'll tell you it's on the So you'll um, tell Diana about it? I will, yeah. Why don't you ask, maybe she could send something out to the zoning board and see if there's anybody okay. interested, just like one person from there. Could you have a time? Four, Four o'clock. Kip says they might meet that night, so they maybe someone could come earlier. And, uh, oh. From the zoning board. Okay. Great. Well, that's very helpful. I appreciate your taking the time to, yeah, to do no, that. That great. helps out a lot. Remind me about the grant. What is it again? Well, it's a municipal vulnerability preparedness that's grant right. from the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs, and it's it ends on June 30th. Yeah. So. We'd like to try to get as much of the work done during the you sure. know, grant as possible. We, we did apply for a, a third round um, grant, which um, we haven't heard back yet um, whether that's going to get funded. Uh, but that would allow us to kind of continue some of this ongoing so work. I, I guess my thought is that, you know, I'll try to get a, a draft as, as finished as I can by the end of the month. And if there's further work that's needed, then I'll just, you know, come in and, and yeah. meet with you as needed on um, right. stuff like Frank that. Frank Morrow. He's the chairman. Yeah, why, do you want to talk well, to him? And I can stop by and just let him know. Tell him. He should know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But whether he responds or not. No, but yeah. yeah. And one other thing about this one and the other one is um, they both talk about special permitting. And I think under our current bylaws, the Zoning Board of Appeals is the current um, what do you call it, special permit authority unless otherwise defined. Um, so for the solar, I know we define it as the planning board is the special permitting, and I think for other things we have too. In these documents, it looks like it's kind of assumed it's the planning board, but I think if, unless we say that, then it actually is the ZBA. That's the default. I would, um, so I would put it out to this board and say, do we want to be, would we want to be proactive and say we would want to be the, uh, special permitting authority for floodplain and, and green development. Well, I think it makes sense that we do, I, because I, I, for a long time I, I disagreed with the fact that the zoning board is, uh, is the permitting authority because uh, if you are not granted, the only way you can appeal it is through court. Right. So by exactly. us being the uh, permitting authority, if someone doesn't like our decision, then they can go to the ZBA. They can. Yeah. They've got someplace they, else to go. That's what the right. Board of Appeals is, I believe it should be for. So. And I, 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 completely I would agree, agree especially when we're going with, this is all like site plan review stuff, so we're going to be doing it anyway. Right? Yes. So it would right. be yeah. really inefficient to have them then okay. do a whole other set of things. So. All right. Yeah. yeah. So we should just say that up front in we these, should. In these um, sections. I agree. Yeah. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. And this, all. Um, so the the thing that the citizens' petition had was about um, uh, impervious surface and stuff like that. So that's the kind of thing that it. But this other stuff might fit into that, or gives incentives, so that might yeah, be, take that, that into consideration. And that was part of our discussion with the meeting that I had in, with the DRD is that yeah. we're going to try to fold into this site plan review amendment 
their concerns and their issues so that there wouldn't be two, you know, parallel that, tracks that going forward. For Chris, so I can write it down. I'm sorry? DRD stands for? Oh, Deerfield Citizens for Responsible Development. I believe that's one how. One of the things that, since we're doing all this, we should, I think that we should consider is I'm, I'm not saying that um, impervious surfaces, good, bad, or whatever. Uh, we seem to hold a new applicant to a very tight line as to how big it can be, how much, wh what are they going to do with their water and stuff like that. And I'm not a tattletale, but I got to tell you, over the last 12 months or so, there has been more expansion of existing parking lots and repaving than any permits we've given out in the last 15 years. And we do nothing about it. So if there is a problem with that, yeah. we should address it. Right. Don't just deal with what's in front of us. Right, 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 mm. right. You know? The, in other words, enforcement is, that's, that's once again, it's, that's it's, a, it's a big problem issue. in this town. There, there's, we have a lot of problems in this town. Um, enforcement is a, is a big problem. Um, and uh, it seems like there are people who just don't want to relinquish authority, but yet don't want to do anything, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well said. Mm. So thank you, and you might, if you just hold on for another minute. So we have, we have a couple other zoning um, potential uh, bylaw changes we want to make, and one was sent to us by um, like, I don't know, almost a year ago by um, Kyle Scott when he was here and Dick Kalashevsky mm -hmm. um, about sign and signs and this one was about signage. The other is about the definition of a shipping and freight containers. You know, people are starting to put storage containers places. And, and then the other was accessory, uh, accessory apartments. But let me so I'll hand this out. Yeah, um, so this is about the signage thing. Do you... Chris, have anything about, um, does that fit into any of this? Because that's kind of a green development too, maybe, accessory apartments is kind of, what you're talking about is a little more dense. Yeah. This is signage. This is not and keeping perfect. prices down this sort of for housing, houses. more affordable housing, yet, you nope. know. That one's yeah. containers. Um, so, so you're, you think that, that's about these, well, these are just proposed, we can just, we don't have to look at them much tonight, but. Um, do you have the accessory apartment? I haven't seen the. No, I don't have the accessory apartment one. I do have a copy of that. And do you know what other towns? I mean, a lot of towns are doing doing stuff with um, with accessory apartments, accessory apartments, and, and duplexes, and you know that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't. And I don't, even then, we even talked about frontage, you know, issue. But um, I don't think it has. I don't think it fits into the yeah. green development performance standards in any way, but I, I will say that I, you know, when I was working at the Planning Commission, we did a lot of work on accessory apartment bylaws, and um, I have a pretty good model bylaw that I can share with you if that would be helpful. For a, a rural town versus, because I know there yep. might be differences in a city and a Absolutely. rural town, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'd, be, that'd be super, because that's another... Um, thing that I think in the next sort of whatever, six months we want to get out there and get some comments on. And, and signage as well. I have a pretty good model for signage. All um, right. I, and it could be that what we haven't, what we've received are more tweaks to our current one because we find problems with it, but it might be good to start over again sometimes and look at just a good one from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think that makes sense. So that would be great if you could send yeah, them. Yeah, I'd be happy to share those with you. Send them around. All right. Well, this is an interesting, just, sorry. I know it's the mail jumping in. Yeah. But it's from UMass. Uh, it's to the Conservation Committee. It's an environmental conservation. Student Extension Association, extens Extension Professor talking about the fiscal impacts of conservation restrictions. And um, they did, the Waitley is one of their test cases, <coughs> uh, speaking to the idea that, um, the cost of conservation to a community is not necessarily as high as one might think. Um, anyway, residential development does not necessarily pay for itself, so that conservation could be actually more advantageous fiscally for a town, actually, than we otherwise thought. Well, 
Anyway, it's kind of interesting. <coughs> it's relative to the same thing. I know. It's, it's yes. a, yeah, we want to hear more. Um, Here. Have well, it. no, I mean, I'll see what the results are there. So they're doing a study or they're going to. They did it. They did it. Oh, yeah. well, then. Four, four Massachusetts communities Great Barrington, Upton, Haverhill, and Waitley. Oh, so we'd definitely like to hear about where, where can we find that Waitley, information? Yeah. Um, masswoods.org. Masswoods. Backslash community conservation. Thank you. Conservation does not necessarily create tax burden for town residents. All right, thanks very much. Thanks for your time, appreciate sure. it. Thank you. Lily, anything else related to this? Or, all right. Thanks. So, um, so what should we do about these other potential bylaw changes? What should we, it's almost like you want to, you need like an hour to kind of just go through them. Well, we do. Say, there's uh, a lot to... There is a lot. The, the accessory apartment, I, I've, I read what Kyle and Dick put together, and, and it really is, it's a two-family house, if you, whether you want to call it a two-family house or a duplex. And I, I know, or I believe I know why duplexes aren't allowed in a majority of our town, but yet they're still allowed in the Central Village District. Uh, but yet some people have accessory apartments, and then uh, they're... I guess some people look at it as now they're rented illegally because they're not two family houses. So how do you turn a single family house that has an accessory apartment into a duplex when it's allowed in the CRV district anyways? See, so you know what I'm saying? It's allowed and it is a two family house. So why is it an illegal apartment? So, so there might be two different Answers to that, right? Maybe, in, maybe, in, That's what I'm well, maybe CVRD. You just say duplexes are allowed. And, and Accessory well, they apartments are. weren't. Wasn't that for a caregiver or right? They're well, smaller right. apartments. So that's a, okay, but, but what I'm saying is we're supposed to turn them back in, over if they didn't. In the that. CRV, in the Central Village District, duplexes are allowed. You can you can build a new one. You can you. It's okay. Fine. Okay. So there's a couple of homes right across the street here that are, were single family homes and small additions were put on for an accessory apartment. Now this apartment exists, and the, the, the person it was built for is no longer with us, so now the people who own the house are saying, well, now I have this illegal apartment I can't rent. Well, it wouldn't be illegal if It you isn't. It, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not illegal. Right. You know, so why is it even called an accessory apartment? Because it's just a two-family house. So but it's a matter of semantics. Is what well, accessory apartment is in a, well, like a duplex. Are there certain like uh, zoning, like kitchens and stuff like this? Different. Accessory apartment might not have Sizing. a kitchen or a bathroom. Mm -hmm. well, I don't, I that, don't that's know. True. That's, that, that, that's true. That's that's true. But then mind. it's not really but an apartment we don't have a right. because it's just apartment. another part of your house. Right. You know. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't know the laws or the building codes or whatever. We don't. But once, but even. But once you have like a separate bathroom and a separate so kitchen, kitchen area, area that's considered an apartment. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, some I know some homes have like a, a kitchen in their basement, and some people would use them for canning or whatever. Yeah, I but know. but it doesn't mean it's a no. you know it's strictly a it's a ranch. It's right. You know, right. But I, but there must that, be a, a size difference. I mean, when you have an accessory apartment, you're not talking about a duplex where you have two full families. An accessory apartment is. I mean, and that would be in the definition. You create a definition table where you say accessory apartments either like in a separate building or it's attached, but not, you know, not in excess of, you know, one third the square footage of the. I mean, so you're not really creating two, two family homes. But if you have two families living there, I don't. I, I know what you're saying, but I'm yeah. I'm just saying in terms of I, I and I don't, who is living there or whatever. It's just in terms of square footage. That's here in our definitions. It says that the the accessory yeah, is. That's before. Accessory structure is subordinate to the principal structure, mm -hmm. right. customarily uh, used to serve the purposes of the principal building. Mm -hmm. So that's where 
you can have a mother-in-law and that's accessory to the but a second family becomes a second right so not as sub, not as supportive right but my question is uh, why why would somebody in the central village district come in and even apply to put an accessory apartment to say I'm just going to make my house into a duplex yeah that's you makes know? sense yeah. that's what I would and that yeah. way when the, right. the intended use or the initial use yeah. expires yeah. I shouldn't right. use that word but they don't uh, have to discontinue then, it. they don't oh. then they can just go <laughs> ahead I like that and, word and that's it. great it's nicer than others Cute. Well. expires yeah so I think and and right now CRV CVRD it's it, two families is a yes right right and an accessory is special permit so any it, smart person would come in and, and do right, the right. family exactly. because they don't yeah, have to deal with it. Size requirements, or there could be. Yeah. So are there size requirements for them? No, not. I don't have any. Well, then yeah, I think our, we don't have definitions for them. Can you go back to that? What if you wanted to have an accessory? Where is the accessory department? There's the two family and then the accessory department. Okay. So. Billy has something to say. I was actually a part of the group that created that accessory apartment bylaw. You're admitting that. <laughs> Whenever we did it, it, so I mean, I can tell you what the conversation was around it, uh, some of which Kip brought up, and it, the whole concept of it being a subordinate apartment, and then when the occupant expired, expired or celestially discharged, as they say <laughs> in the field of aging, there yeah, they do, okay. um, then people were saying, well, then they can't just rent it out, but people said, why not? Right. And that was the actual answer, because um, it, it is what it is. It's an apartment. It's fully permitted, and it was not perceived as being a two-family because it was subordinate. It's a small place. I mean, it's not typically what people would want. So that was the discussion at town meeting when we well, this, if where, that helps. where it gets, I, I shouldn't use the word problematic for me, but where I see the issue is in our bylaws, as I pointed out, in the Central Village District, you can have a two family house. Right. Okay. But say somebody comes in and they go by the accessory apartment in the Central Village, so they get this. Now all of a sudden they want to rent it out. Some say, well, you can't, that's an accessory apartment. Well, you call it what you want, but it's a two family house, it's a matter of right. Oh. Because of where it's located. Yeah, because where it's located. It. But now somebody who lives in the RA district, they also could apply for an accessory apartment. But when their use, their intended initial use expires, right. now they can't rent it because of where they are in town. Because well, it's... No, but, but I mean, the idea, that was the conversation, but what right. happened in town yeah. meeting, yeah. everybody said, go ahead and rent it. Right, but, 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 but because it's in the RA district, now if they rented it, so that would be illegal. So this is why we want to. Right, right. right. It would. This is why we want to make changes to that's this. That's why we yeah. want to change it. So, okay, so that's. But wouldn't it be simpler just to say that you could put duplexes anywhere? Well, maybe some people don't want duplexes everywhere. Yep. But what, you could do. I, I think. I mean, right the way this bylaw is so discriminatory. It is. It, you know that. You, well, it's not. Discriminatory. But the people chose to let you're, a duplex no, be created in the Central if, Village District. If you. Where you live, you can't do something, but if you live here, you can. Yeah. But that's and true about it's a, it's true a, about everything. Both, right? But that's well, frontage and it's, everything. It's I mean, residential it's area. Problem, so. It sure. could be the characteristics of the community. They didn't want to change yeah. it, and that's yeah. maybe why they did it. It's not to discriminate. All the schools do as well. I mean, and to Roger's point, that the idea was let us try this. Let yeah. us see what the demand is. Yeah. Let us see what happens as people age out. Right. Um, sure. Then and see what happens. And so because then you come back and you review it again. So maybe the thing yeah, to do is to find out what yeah. has been the impact. Yeah. Minimal, none. I have, I have no idea. Yeah. I've not been involved for a while. But anyway, that if that helps in understanding. No, that is helpful. And it, I think it is that that's how it was, and now we need to revise it. Right. Yeah. And whether we change the two-family dwelling or change the accessory, but I think something's got to be brought together. Sure. Right. So. So how do we go about that right thing? It's like another subgroup. Um, well, and I, I, actually, does anybody know our, uh, this kind of gets into the whole building inspector, um, building commissioner. We're looking for new, there's some new staff coming to town, I think. Or, Did they hire somebody? That's what no, I'm wondering, where that all it's, stands. It's um, been on the, the agenda for like uh, two months. So um, appoint new building. 
Yeah, we, it was like years. So you know, it's been a long time. Uh, but I mean, it's been on the yeah. Yeah. nothing Netflix official. Table. But I do, I do know. <laughs> I know this is on TV. Uh, <laughs> so, I, so choose I, your words carefully. I do know that uh, a, an individual has been um, decided upon. Oh. Uh, there was an issue with the salary. Uh, the select board spoke about the salary and um, we're supposed to go to the personnel board this evening, earlier. Uh, but the town administrator wrote to the personnel board saying that the select board had already voted on changing the grade of the building inspectors. So the personnel board said, well, if the select board's already done this, we don't need to do this. But in reality, the select board did not do that. So. Right. We don't. So it's so it's, it's, so it's, it's an issue. Still, but it's, 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 it seems like there's some progress, yeah. maybe. But yeah. so I, I guess I mean I, ideally, if we had a little more office help and there's an assistant administrator coming on board at some point, and then a building inspector, and then a few of us, that would make I think it would move faster, it and it would it also better. because right. a lot of this gets some monitoring, and that's that person needs that's to true. that that's that true. position needs to be involved in that. So. But I, and, and I think the monitoring is, it's, it's a big issue in town, but I mean, I think one thing that we could talk about in this group is, is exactly kind of how we're talking about it now. Yeah. You know, you have a house and you have a permitted uh, accessory. accessory apartment. And the initial reason for that accessory apartment has now changed. Yeah. What do we make that person do? Take that apartment apart or do we allow them to rent it? And now it's easy. Uh, so the, the argument before you continue with this, um, so this is the discussion we need to have, but I'm not sure it's right now. And right. ideally, we would get some other accessory apartment bylaws, like what Chris said. He's got some good ones. Sure. Let's get them. Okay. And then seriously discuss it. So can we set aside now or the next? Sure. I, I just, I weeks? just, you know, it's kind of. It, I think for most of us, a lot of times we can have this discussion. But if we have some ideas floating yeah, yeah, yeah. around, we yeah, can yeah, think yeah. about them yeah, and say, yeah. you know, I, I've had a chance to think about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever. So I would encourage, if anybody can go back and find their, six months ago probably, yeah. did you say you found it? Uh, I'm sure it's in that bag right there. All right, so if any of us find it, like an email around the thing first. that was proposed six months ago, and then the ones I handed out tonight, the sign, some of these might be I quick ones, some of them might not be. Yeah. Um, That's about myself. But it looks like our 25th meeting actually has two, uh, two hearings on it already so maybe it's the july meeting we could put this on the agenda that's july 1st is that right yeah that's what you said i think yeah yep. oh, i'm just looking for confirmation yeah so it's july 1st july 1st if you're playing what says it right there yep because i got an auto auto fill auto fill so let's 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 do that um so actually if you can put that in the minutes paul that helps because sometimes that's we what i forget that's, <laughs> what we that's decided why i asked it okay. thank you Seven one twenty nineteen at seven o'clock. All right, so that's good. Then I have a couple other things that were presented to me tonight. I need to tell you about um, invoices. Um, need to approve payment for this invoice. So this is. Um, Weston and Sampson, they did a peer review for 198 Mill Village Road, and I think that money is actually already in the, uh, it was paid for by the applicant, so it's just sitting, I'm not sure why they always need approval, but can, I'm approving it, okay? Mm -hmm. And then um, department postage, $173.53, uh, approve that. Not just administrative things, but, um, and then we got a message from Deerfield Naturals, which is that's, that's the one that's over here in the old uh, Deerfield Plastics Atlantic Furniture Building over here. Right, Deer, uh, to the town of Deerfield Planning Board, please be advised that Deerfield Naturals is conducting a community outreach presentation on Thursday, June sixth. 2019 at 5 p.m. in the main meeting room at the Deerfield Town Hall. Uh, find the, no the public notification sent to a Butters 
of the property below. For our records, please sign the single copy notification. All right, so there's a community outreach presentation Thursday, June 6th. I guess this may be something that's um, required by the mm -hmm. community agreement or something. What time again? All right, here's the, here's the public notification. Notification hereby given that community outreach meeting for a proposed marijuana establishment is scheduled for June 6th, 2019, 5 p.m. here at the town hall. The proposed establishment will cultivate, manufacture, and provide retail sales of medical and recreational marijuana. The marijuana establishment is anticipated to be located at 10 Greenfield Road in South Deerfield. There will be an opportunity for the public to ask questions. How much was that postage bill? 173.53 cents. Okay. I don't know what they want me to do. Let me sign it. Fold it all up and stuff from here. I know, it's all stuck together here. Anything else that um, we I should talk about? To wow. That was Quick note before anybody says it. There's been a motion to adjourn and a second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain?